Hi there, and uh, welcome to this new painting tutorial to acrylics that I'm using. Um, it are these acrylics, it's the Expert Acrylic Artist Quality Expert Series by Amsterdam, which is, uh, I believe, under the brand of Talents, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be using. Oh, and there's one colour that is not, because they don't have dioxazine purple. Um, in, um, in this brand, so that's why I'm using Ara. And I actually like this brand a bit better, because the lids are better than the ones they use over here. And in proportion, these are cheaper, although upon buying them at first, these are more expensive because they're bigger, so they cost more. So yeah, and we're using some uh, acrylic brushes right here, and we're not going to be using all of them, I think we're going to be using the smaller ones, like um, this one, or maybe maybe this one would be the biggest, oh, it, oh it's sticking to my clothing, there we go, um, I think this one would probably be the biggest one we're using, and then this will be the smallest size that we're using, I think that's going to be all you need for today. So yeah, these brushes are new, I bought them today, because I cycled to the Arts and Crafts, which is like, oh, one hour of cycling, but we took a detour because we didn't know how to go, so it actually took us two hours because I went with my niece, so that's what I'm saying, we and us. Um, yeah, so these are Elko, and I'm using a number 12 right now, which is, I think, uh, roughly a centimeter, maybe a little bit less, and this is half a centimeter right here, and this is obviously a detail brush. So we're going to be using, we're going to be doing this abstract uh, lion thing. Um, I drew it on this piece of paper. Uh, some of these lines um, indicate brush directionality because it is abstract, so brush directionality is kind of important, and then. Um, this, I, I traced it because I made some carbon paper out of it, see, just scribble some of the graphite on the back, and it's carbon paper right there. So yeah, um, so yeah, I, if you want to draw it, then I suggest you pause the video now, so that you could copy this, sort of. So yeah, um, I'm putting that away. I um, just sewed it because there was a painting underneath this that I did not like, so, yeah. Um, let me put my hairdryer away for a second, we're not going to be needing that right now. Uh, so, you're going to take your biggest brush, and um, I'm going to actually just put it in a water and leave it there for one second, because I'm going to have to put out my colours. Oh, what happened? Oh. Um, let me first do something about this situation right here. We don't want our colours to get contaminated by other colours. We want them to be lively and everything. I want them to be on this side so that you guys could see it too. Since I know that this is where the camera still sees what I'm doing. Okay, I'm putting out a little bit only because if I need more, I can always put out more. I can't put it back into the tube, so yeah, that is why I'm going to be using some yellow. Lots of it, actually, but you know what? That's important for right now. There is some black in this painting, but that is also not important for right now. I think we'll be doing this with some purple as well. So we're going to be doing the background first, and that's what we're going to be using these colours for. Okay, so, now that I have made my brush wet and ready to go, I'm going to just try it and, you know, get some water on it. Okay, there we go. Um, so let's start off with some red. This is the load on my paintbrush, by the way. If you, maybe this is better. I don't know. Um, so yeah, 
and I can already see that it is covering quite well. Um, one thing that I would suggest is you put two different colors in your background on your brush, right? Right. So you don't mix them, but you could totally add some purple in there, and it will give you a whole different look. Because it's abstract, um, don't worry about blending it. It does not need to be blended. It's fine the way it is. Just make sure you cover all the white, and you're pretty much settled. If you're doing this like me, not on an easel, because you want the camera to pick it up, then I suggest that you put something underneath your painting to protect it. But you know what? I am, first of all, lazy. Second of all, I do not really care about this wooden board I have underneath it, so... And you know, if I don't care, then who's going to care? So, um, I'm actually, like, I do this painting now in some sort of small version kind of thing, and then later on I'll be doing it in uh, some bigger version, so I'll be doing it on a real canvas and everything, that's going to be nice. You don't have to fill in the line itself, that is kind of useless if you do that, because, you know, you're going to paint over it anyway. Um, now that I'm doing this, I'm thinking, first of all, wow, I am moving way too slow. And second of all, I should have probably chosen a bigger brush. Although, you know, this is going fine for now. Um, so, yeah. Just getting some more red, putting it on here. Make sure you cover all the white spots. That is probably your biggest job as an artist. If you want to make something look professional, you cover all the white spots. That is rule number one. Very important. Um, yeah, so we're going to go into the purple again because I thought that created a nice effect and I don't think. I got the same, um, um, the same result from the yellow, so that is kind of disappointing, but you know what, it's okay like this, and I kind of like these brushes right now. One thing you could do in your composition to make the lion stand out more is um, either to put a ring of uh, this, like, so you surround him with um, purple and then make it lighter towards the edges, or you make the edges darker. Um, but don't make it one solid colour, because, and especially if you're gonna make it one solid colour, Please do a, a color that is not as vibrant as, as for example, cadmium red, because um, your lion will basically vanish. It is nothing will be left of it. As you can see, I'm not adding too much water or anything to my paint. I like to just, you know, put it on there, so, um, without much water, because this way, okay, you're going to go through your paints a bit faster, but on the other hand, it is going to give so much more of a vibrant effect, and, um, what I have experienced is that this way it covers better as well, so 
you know. But for the first layer, covering is not really that important, but now I just like the structure and texture that it gives, because it gives it nice little edges. Let's see, but where, okay, so this is where I have to continue. Okay. I was lost in my drawing for a second right there, going, hey, what's the point of this? Yeah. Oh wow, I did not say anything interesting, because um, <laughs> I should, oh yeah, by the way, if you're doing this in this kind of abstractish way, um, make sure you don't create some sort of pattern, because your head is trying to make a pattern, and you should totally be the one resisting that, going, no, you're not going to make a pattern, you know, that should be you saying that to your head, so to yourself if you like. So okay, I think that is good. And now, I'm going to rinse my brush off really well, because I saw it creeping up to the ferrule and I don't want to lose this brush immediately. Oh good rinses out really easily actually. I like these brushes, they're good. Or at least this one is, I hope the rest is just as good. No. Okay, that's good. Now we're gonna dry it with my hair dryer, so I'm gonna pause it and be right back. Okay, so it has dried, and you could see that when it's um, it's losing its shininess, and oh, it's a little bit tacky on the somewhat thicker parts. But in you know, you know, in general, it's dry, and we're gonna use this part, so we're not gonna be painting on top of this. So it's not really an issue if it is not dry over here. Okay, so these lines right here are all about brush directionality and color. So yeah, we're gonna need to fit out some white as well. Hello, white, yeah, thank you, yeah. Okay. I thought it wasn't gonna work for a second there. Thought my white was just going, no, no, not today, buddy. But it was working with me all along. Okay, right there is my brown, and I need some black as well. As you can see, I spritz my paint, um, because I want it to stay good for a long period of time, so that, you know, I don't have a problem with that. So that I do not waste my paint because it dries out. So that is what I do when I put out paint as I spritz it. Okay, so onto our somewhat smaller brush which we're going to be using for the lion itself, although for these hairs right here we're going to be using the bigger one as well, but for right here, right now, it's okay to use this. Okay, I have two water cups, one of which is clean and one of which is used to, you know, clean the brush. So don't use that one to make your brush wet again, because that will, well, it can ruin um, your painting if there is too much pigment pigment in that water. 
Okay, so now this is a damp brush and we're going to be putting in some yellow. I'm going to start with adding in some just yellow and we'll be, you know, editing that. So, yeah, some just yellow right here. It's okay if there is some structure in there, that's good. If you get to the edge of something, uh, try using the edge of your brush. It will create a nicer line. Yeah, so... Here as well. Here's some yellow. Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, there's also some yellow right here, so I'm going to just put it in right now. Okay, and without washing the brush. You're going to be using some white. And you just put it in, make sure it is a nice load. And you're going to put it where your highlights would be. So, you know, I don't know, I kind of want to rinse my brush now because it's not really, like, the white is not showing up. So, yeah, I am going to rinse off my brush right now. I simply need to There we go And there is white over here That goes that way And some white that is here. Here, well there's not too much white in here anyway, but you know what And then the white starts showing up where there is not too much white. Good. That is not working for me here. That will be good enough. Okay, rinsing off. And we're going to be adding some. Um, let's take some water on the brush again. We're going to be adding some red to this. I feel like a skin is developed on top of it, but you know what, we'll make it work. And red is actually a very bright colour, so you shouldn't be using too much of it. Right, so you put it on there, and then rinse off your brush, and you just work it in. Otherwise it's going to overpower the painting.
this is a shadow area right there and therefore we're gonna have to uh, put some red with some uh, purple right there and actually I want to add some of this brown into the painting right along here as well I'm just everywhere right now. My head, seriously, I have no logic in any way ever. Okay, so that is some purple. And we're gonna have to mix a nice red color. But it needs to have a little purple in it so that it's really indicating hey, the shadow right here. Working on the edge of the brush right now. Mm. Do not like this brush as much as I did the other, but it's still good. Still better than what I had. <laughs> Ooh, those were sad. Very sad brushes. There we go. The nice thing is, it is an abstract, so you could do whatever you want and it's all valid. Um, but do try to make it look beautiful, that is my advice. I thoroughly suggest you do that. But I'm liking how this, how this is turning out so far, so that's good. Um, so yeah. I'm now just going to use some plain white to make the beardish kind of thing that, you know, lions have. There we go. I do want this to cover the background quite nicely. So there we go. I think that's nice. Oh, this is a very nice painting so far. Okay, so we're gonna work, be working on this part of the face right here. And the brush directionally and then this part will be there is um there is um a red spot right here actually. Let me put that in first before I start with it directionality. Need to tone that down, definitely. Need to tone that down. There we go. Okay, there we go. Go. Okay, that sounded weird. Um, no. But I am weird, so it's good. It's okay. It's all good. because this is not okay. There we go. Okay. And then just 
drag that out. Nice bright orange spots. There you go. And then you rinse off the brush. Now you want these colours to be really vivid, so that is why you're rinsing off the brush so much. You know, I wouldn't normally do that, but you know, I, I really just want these colours to be to pop and to be bright. Everyone needs to notice these colours and go, wow, I just want bright painting. There we go. And actually, the ears are also this colour, I believe. Um, yeah, but, you know, I'm gonna go over this with some white, and the ears are just going to be this, so they don't have any white on them, which is going to separate them. we go. I am sorry if I'm in the screen all the time. I probably am. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm painting and it can be difficult sometimes to then stay out of the screen. Okay, so this is white is going to be what gives it its directionality. Okay, there you go. Actually, I'm going to just put very little pressure to kind of wipe that away right here because I did not quite like it the way I want it to be. Um, there we go. That's good. Okay, so now I think what I'll do is I'll dry it for a second. Although I kind of want to edit this, so... I don't know. I want some brown tint in there as well. Okay, that, that's better. So it was really not showing up and I really wanted to because that is just the other side of him um, so I'm going to dry this for a second and I'll be going in with some black um, right then so yeah okay so that is good um, so yeah now we're going to go in with the black the black and we're going to damp the brush, there we go, and it's, yeah, there we go, take off the axis, and um, load your brush like this, like this, and then I am going to start um, here, you know, because we're going to need a neat detail for that. I need a detail for this as well. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> like, oh my god. Yeah. Okay, need a detail for this. Noted. So if you're doing this at home, I suggest you take a detail brush and go do this here. Because this is not working. Okay. So, I'm getting out my detail brush. There we go. Now this should work. 
So you're going to roll your detail brush through the panes so that it is loaded like this. Yeah. It's, it's, you can barely see it. I don't know. Yeah, so it's a little like this. And what you're going to want to do is put a stripe around the ear as well. It does not need to be perfect because no one's going to notice if it isn't. There we go, and there is um, something above his eye right here. There we go, and then this. And there is also some vague black stripes right here, so that looks pretty good. And then his nose is also black, and his nose has the following shape. It obviously starts here, dives into a point, then goes up straight for a second and then curves like this yeah following and then you just do this right here and have a lion's nose you did it, actually, and that's pretty good of you, if you made that. That was probably one of the hardest parts of the whole painting. <laughs> like, seriously. Now let's just add some black over there. Implying that this line is actually a thing. And there also needs to be some black over here. Because that is naturally accurate. There we go. And don't worry about covering this because it looks better if you don't. Right, like that. It's good. And of course, if you don't like something that I do, um, just because I like it doesn't mean you have to do it. So let's say you don't like this black right here, you can just leave it out. It's all up to you. Because you are the artist. Also, let's say you'd be doing one of my paintings and, well, you get, happen to get the chance to sell it, then, you know, you go for it. I mean, you probably earned it because you probably did something to that painting that made it extra special because otherwise someone won't buy it. And, uh, and I mean, it's not like I have a name. I, I would appreciate it if you would mention me to them that I am also an artist, and that I am apparently your inspiration for that painting. You know, I would appreciate if you did that. It's not necessary though, but it's it would help quite a bit, because, you know, 
it's not like I really have a name or anything. Well, I do, but it's not, it's not like I, I am famous. Okay, so that is good. Okay, so now I'm gonna actually uh, stick to this brush and put in his eyes really quickly because, you know, that is just... I believe he just has some hazel eyes and we're gonna, I'm gonna actually make some reddish brown kind of color I like that the look of that maybe even add some of this yellow right here there we go oh yes that is a beautiful color it looks something like um Yellow ochre and Australian sienna, something in between that or along those lines, right? There we go. And I'm actually going to put in my highlight now, because I am not patient whatsoever. Oh, there's a lot of moisture on my brush still, I shouldn't have that. Um, There we go, I like that. And then obviously he needs a pupil. See, I'm trying to keep this painting under an hour, I'm sorry if that doesn't work. I know you guys have things to do and lives to live and I am just something that keeps bothering you. <laughs> but I do take up a lot of your guys' time, that's annoying. Probably. So, I am trying to really keep it, um... No, I want to educate you guys on this subject of painting, so I do want to give you all the information that is necessary, but I also want to, you know, give you guys some time, and, yeah. So, yeah. I am still trying to find that balance, as you know, I'm not a very experienced YouTuber in any way, so if I do not find that balance properly, I am very sorry. Okay, so I went ahead and got a new paper towel, and, and we're going to be starting on the, and, and finishing the painting actually, but we're going to be starting on the hairs, which are going to be, or the manes, I believe. Not the manes. And they're going to be the last part of the painting, because after that, you're done. And somehow there is still some red in this brush, so I'm going to have to clean it after this very thoroughly. I'm cleaning it somewhat right now, just making sure that it leaves no red traces, because as long as, as, long as it does not do that, you're pretty much fine. Um, so yeah. We just now it comes down to random colors, so it basically does not matter what color you choose at this point. The uh, only thing that matters is brush directionality. So, like right here, you want something like this. And this is where you get to be really expressive, so. Yeah, and I'm actually I'm gonna dry this for one second. I'm sorry for the noise, but I just need to let go. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Again, sorry for the noise. I just really need to do that right there, and then.
Now, in the breast directionality, just needs to be believable. It does not need to be accurate. Let's say you were painting from a reference. You don't need to, you know, put in every single line of hair that is in there. No, but you need to be believable. Okay, so I'm gonna guess I'm just gonna do a little um, white right here, and a little white right here. And some brown right here. I'm not that good at twisting it during the stroke, so that is what's going wrong. But you know what? No one's going to really notice. I actually put some purple in there to indicate some shadow right here. So these hairs are further back. Some white for the hands. Some yellow put in there. Some purple put in there. So you could do anything right now. This is basically the most fun part of the painting. Just splashing random colors in there, it's going to be okay. So yeah, I think this is turning out pretty cool. I'm going to be rinsing off my brush for a second because obviously those vague little lines right here, you don't want those in the hairs. The hairs really need to be on there. It's just, you know, like you take a little of this, you take a little of that, and you really just... Take a little of that to just, you know, swoop. I'm gonna call it that. You swoop. Good work for it. There we go.
go. Um, so now it comes down to the top part where the hairs actually stand up a little, as if it is a horse. Um, which it's not, obviously. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna be doing that with a smaller brush, but so if first do this for a second. Uh red. We don't have a lot of red up here. We don't Yeah. I like how that just blends into the background, going, yeah, I am hair, but I'm not. I actually leave that, um, make that solid line right there, looks better. Okay, so now that I have that, now we're going to go in with, into this with our... Uh, detail brush as well, add some uh, black lines to this, um, because we obviously need those to define um, the hair a little more. Yeah, so far I really like this. Um, so yeah, we're switching to this brush, make it wet, make it moist. Really awful word, moist. For some reason, my brother entered my room. I don't know why. You know what? I really don't care either. There we go. I think that looks pretty awesome. Maybe a little purple in there. Ooh, this purple's nice for defining the lines right here. This purple does some small things right here. Don't need to define those lines anymore with black, but we are gonna put some black in just for fun, just to make to make the painting one cohesive more thing. And then we're gonna sign it in white, not black. So we're gonna do your first name in white and your last name in black, or the other way around, depending on how your composition is looking. Um, I. I'm going to use my artist name from now on, because um, in a live stream with the Art Sherpa, we decided I needed an artist name, um, which was going to be my YouTube name, Official Panda. So, yeah. I'm going to be signing it like that.
go. And if you think, well, that's too much, for example, you could either paint it out, which is a really good option. You should probably do that one. But if you don't like it because you've seen it in my video and you've decided, well, it's not what I'm going for, then you can definitely leave some of the black lines out. So, I think he's done. I think he turned out pretty good. Pretty swell. Yeah. There's a nice painting of a lion. Huh. Okay. So, oh, and I actually have to put out more whites for this. So, what I'll do is, you know, because there's white over here, just take that. I do that with all my colors. If I need a little bit more, I just do that. And you actually want some water on your brush right for this, because you want to make a thin line for your uh, sign, for your signature. So yeah. So I'm going to be signing this right here. I know my signature looks awful right here, but you know what? I've never signed in the name of official panda ever, so that must be why. Okay, so there we go, and now I'm going to use some black. Right, so we're almost done. Well, almost, just two more letters. Just one A. Yes. There you go. You finished an absolutely gorgeous. Uh, t um, I was gonna say tiger. Um, <laughs> an absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, um, lion painting. Wow, vocabulary, good. I, I, I am very good at English and everything, you know? So yeah, I thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. I hope you uh, like the fact that I uh, was able to keep the palette in screen, and I hope to see you guys later. So, bye.